Hello. Welcome. This is the Judge Ben Show, and I'm Ben Joseph, a retired Vermont Superior Court judge. This is a program in which I interview people about issues that concern the Vermont uh, court system. It's my, uh, God knows how many of these I've done. <laughs> I've done quite a few. I hope I won't bore anybody. This is uh, limited to 30 minutes, and uh, we're going to do our best to keep it, keep it interesting at all times. My guest today is Diane Wheeler, Deputy State's Attorney from Franklin County. I've known Diane for a very long time. In fact, my wife once worked with her in the Franklin County State's Attorney's Office. And uh, she's done a, a, a hell of a job for a long time. We're here today to talk about restorative justice, which is a uh, program that's been uh, going for several years now in the courts. And I think it's important that the public should understand just what it is and, frankly, how effective it is. So, Diane, how long have you been in the state's attorney's office? Well, I started clerking in the state's attorney's office up in St. Albans in the early 90s, like 90, oh. 91. When That's the 1990s? 1990s rather Good. than the 1890s, Good. yes. Good. Um, when now Judge Howard Van Benthuizen was state's attorney. And he took me on as a clerk. I enjoyed it so much, even though you don't get paid for it, or you didn't back then. Mm -hmm. And I stayed for 18 months to two years wow. until there was a position available to me. Um, I actually applied for the position the same when your wife applied for Judith, oh. and Judith, being more qualified, got the position. Mm. And I got the one that was followed up that position. Um, and then when Judge Van Benthuizen left the state's attorney's office and Jim Hughes took over as state's attorney, um, the monies for that for the position I now hold came through. So I've been employed by the state's attorneys since 1995. Wow. A long time. Wow. But luckily, most of the folks in my office are career prosecutors. Wow, well, that's good. I was thinking today that at least uh, four of the six are career prosecutors. So we have a lot of a great deal of experience, um, but we're all getting to that retirement age. No, no you're not even near it. <laughs> uh, eight, 18 months I can retire. Well, I, I suspect you'll be there for another 10 years. At least. Yeah. At least. <laughs> at least. Well, we're here today to talk about the restorative justice program. And I take it that uh, you deal with this all the time now. Is that right? All the time. Um, restorative justice is a part of our statutes on diversion which allows persons who are referred to the program by the state's attorney to restore the community, to restore victims. And depending on the type of crime it is, um, it, it's a way for the community to be a part of the, the reparations that are made. Mm -hmm. So there can be a dialogue, mm -hmm. there can be some understanding about why it occurred, how it occurred, um, you know, whether it was a poverty issue or a drug issue, whatever it might be. And this is all done before a trial process. There's no tri trial process. Right. Correct. So a person gets, a, a person does something that causes law enforcement, the police, to give them a piece of paper uh, citation to come to court. Mm -hmm. Our office reviews the paperwork from the officer mm -hmm. and sends it, if we believe charges are warranted, then we send it to the court for the judge to find probable cause. That is, there's uh, likely that this person should be held responsible for this. Mm -hmm. At that time, we also review it for di um, diversion or restorative justice. What has this person done? Based on the affidavit of the information from the law enforcement officer, did they take responsibility for what they did? Mm -hmm. What's their criminal record like? Um, what kind of crime is it? So there's many factors that go into it, and it is possible that uh, we will not refer someone to a restorative justice program based on all the information we have about them. And it could be as simple as they have had four cases in diversion or restorative justice you know, before and weren't successful. Is this usually then for first offenders? It's for first or second offenders. Mm -hmm. um, some counties might keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, Franklin County uh, does first and second offenders. Mm -hmm. Well, I take it each county has got a, its own program. 
each, basically. Essentially, yes, because each county has its own personality, and each county has its own state's attorney. While there are guidelines and statute um, that the attorney general kind of sets up for folks, it's ultimately the state's attorneys of that county, their discretion. And well, this is a very, very powerful thing to have at your disposal. It is. Um, our first rule of professional conduct is that we should be, we are the ministers of justice. Mm -hmm. So when we review the information from law enforcement, we not only consider the offender or alleged offender, we consider the victim, the community, uh, whether the, per the offender has supports to get them through the process. So it is looking at it and trying to be, um, to administer justice in that particular situation. And even though it might be a, a retail theft or taking a toy from somebody, each, and we have another one right after it, they could be very different situations mm -hmm. um, depending on how they were done. And again, the, the record and the supports of the the person around them. Well, my my take on this is that if someone goes through the trial process is found guilty and put on probation, then they're under supervision of a probation officer. And basically the message is, if you screw up on probation, you're going to go to jail. Whereas you start in restorative justice by saying, we're taking away the, the threat of jail with the understanding that you're going to participate in conversations and activities that show that you're you acknowledge your guilt and you're being held accountable. Is that a fair description? That is a fair description, but they still have the possibility of a criminal conviction hanging over them um, and the possibility of jail or a fine. Uh, while the restorative justice program has, it has many components, you do contracts, you meet with community panels. If you fail to follow through then the case can be sent back to the court. At that time, you, are, you might be, end up having a trial or re resolving it in a way that is not as um, beneficial to you. Because the biggest benefit to restorative justice and the diversion programs is that at the end of the day and end of the contract, the activities you do, you don't have a criminal conviction on your record. Well, that, that must mean a lot to some people. It does because we have a great number of LNAs now. That w and, uh, people that are getting LNAs, people that... Just, just for the audience, oh, an uh, LNA? Yeah, <laughs> a nursing assistant, a uh, licensed nursing assistant. Mm -hmm. People who work in uh, usually nursing homes, places of that nature. And they might have something happen where they've, you know... Um, you know, picked up a retail theft mm -hmm. or something of that nature, and they want to keep their license. Ah. So this is a way that we can work that out. Or because we need people in the medical profession now mm -hmm. and licensed nursing assistants, um, they might be working on that in that program and they get something, we'll send it to the restorative justice program so that they can get certified. Now, there are some cases we absolutely won't, uh, like if you are working with vulnerable people, you use their credit card or take money from them or treat mm -hmm. them um, in a bad way, then we won't send those to a restorative justice program because we are concerned about exploiting uh, vulnerable people in the future. What about... Um it's hard to put this. I, 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 <clears throat> Are there some cases that you would not put into restorative justice um, just as a matter of your own principle? or uh, As a matter of, well, in part statute, the, some of the listed, what they call listed crimes, those are the crimes that are under Title 13, uh, mm -hmm. that not the ones in the juvenile statutes, that are designated as ones that are so violent or have such an effect on a, a victim or the community that they, they have a special place, they have a very high priority. So those we will not refer, generally speaking. And 
but the ones we absolutely will not refer, nor will the restorative justice programs take in Franklin County, are any crime having that is a, a sexual offense. Mm -hmm. Uh, any crime involving child abuse, child physical abuse, or child sexual abuse. Uh, they won't take domestic violence cases, interpersonal domestic violence. So there are several... What about DUIs? We do not send them to diversion. The, uh, other counties do that? I, that is a question I asked yesterday, mm -hmm. and um, Jim Hughes did not know. Oh. But Jim Hughes is, is, is our state's attorney in Franklin. He's state's attorney. Yeah, he's yeah. the, well, as I like to say, he's the boss of me. <laughs> um, but he has certain things that if they um, could result in a uh, points on your license, oh. he's not going to send. Also, DUIs are, case, are cases where if you got another one, and you eventually got a third one, unfortunately, that's a felony. Hmm. So what these, the numbers one and two are called predicate crimes. It mm -hmm. works its way up. Um, he won't send a number of those. And even for instance, DLS is driving with license suspended are a huge part of our caseload, mm -hmm. a huge. And the, D, the driving with license suspended that are the result of too many traffic tickets or never having a license, we've had a few of those. Mm -hmm. Those Jim will send, or the state's attorney will send to diversion and diversion will accept them. Mm. Actually, they have a restorative justice program in diversion just for those kinds of cases. Because mm. the goal is to get their license back. We all want them licensed and insured. Mm -hmm. But we will not- well, That's a very important consideration. It's a huge consideration for the, mm -hmm. everyone in the community. Mm -hmm. But the ones that, uh, the driving with license suspended cases that are the result of DUIs or uh, driving under the influence, whether it be alcohol or drugs, we do not send to um, diversion. Well, that's understandable. Um, so we do have some criteria for even what people might consider a, you know, a, a simple misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. But there's, there are reasons behind that. And ultimately, the state's attorney does have that discretion. Mm -hmm. Now, I was thinking about this, and throughout my career, I've been approached by defense attorneys. A case wasn't referred to diversion for whatever reason. Defense attorney asked me to take a look at it. Is it something that you think could be referred? We will always reconsider, hmm. um, and that is reconsider sending it. Many times, and I was thinking, I don't think there's been a time where I haven't referred it, if the restorative justice program was willing to take it. Hmm. Uh, but that decision is made by... Well, by me, by the you. state's attorney. Yeah. But uh, So if we miss something, or mm -hmm. we didn't consider a factor, we didn't know about a certain factor, mm -hmm. if somebody brings it to our attention, mm -hmm. we'll check with our restorative justice panel, or in, um, our director, mm -hmm. and see if they'll take it for that. Mm. Um, so there's always a possibility, except for some, as I said, those special cases that are just so victim-centered, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be appropriate. It would be dangerous, actually. Well, the thing that, that, that I, I, I think the restorative justice program is, by and large, it's a great idea. It really does help a lot of people. It not only helps the offender, or the alleged offender, or the victim, it helps everybody to have some really personal contact between someone working within restorative justice and the person who's been referred, that they can establish kind of a relationship, a, a positive thing, where the person who's working for the restorative justice program is trying to help this, this person be accountable and avoid the courts in the future. And I think the uh, numbers bear that out. And look, doing some research, and although the numbers seem to be a, a few years old, it looked as though 81% of persons who are sent to diversion never come back to the criminal justice system again. Now, by diversion, is that separate from restorative justice? No. Okay. Diversion is a type of restorative justice, or the other way around. Restorative justice is a type of diversion. Right. Um, and do, by diversion, you mean the case isn't going to go to trial. It's going to go to some kind of supervision by probation or the restorative justice people. Right. 
And in fact, what's the difference between probation and restorative justice? Well, in what happens is that restorative justice, and in our case, diversion or the DLS program, we have a sexting program that we wish we could expand because that has taken off in the you know, juvenile. Uh, By sexting, what are, you, what are you referring to? Where mostly teens that we're seeing are sending intimate pictures of themselves to others, Funny. and then it goes around. And while technically it could be child pornography and there are statutes around that, really what we want to t have them understand is that these images don't go away. Yeah, oh yeah. That, and it's usually a school situation. So, the, so we have had um, a four week session, but we've been so, there's so many of them, we need more of them available. But the cases come in, and before they see a judge, they go to a program, meet with the community members panel. Mm. They come up with a contract to make reparation, um, to restore the community or the victim whole. And that could be writing a letter of apology, if they've done graffiti, cleaning up the graffiti, mm. if they've broken something. Um, one case, they took the Dan, the Dan Form sign, the little metal yellow guy in front of the Dan Form stores, and we made the decision to. And part of the contract was that they put it back. Oh, you know, so that the store didn't have to incur any cost to mm -hmm. have it put up. And sometimes it's restitution that is paying back the victim from whatever they might have taken from them, whether they broke a, a Nintendo system or they took checks and took money. Mm -hmm. you know, they make restitution to the person or the bank. Um, so they come up with a contract. And the best part of it is, is the, the person that, the offender, get, is part of that contract process. Mm -hmm. They can make decisions about and help say, you know, I can't really do this, but so I So they're really, they, it, it's meant to engage them in the process. It is. And to um, make it so the victim, in some cases, is a part of it. And that's where we really find a number of um, some difficulties, is that sometimes the victims are too traumatized and too scared. But in a number of cases, what the victims want to know is why them? Were they targeted? If so, mm -hmm. why were they targeted? Are some of them angry? Some of them are angry. Mm -hmm. They feel violated, betrayed if it's a someone they know. Mm -hmm. uh, but a number of times we, they learn that it was an opportunity for the mm -hmm. offender. That they weren't targeted because oh. of, but it was just that was their house. There was no one home. It oh. wasn't because they were Joe so and so. So once they make this, the offender makes a contract with the panel, uh, they then complete it. We're looking at about 90 days. If so, their case gets dismissed, and in two years, if they don't have another conviction and their rehabilitation is successful in the court's determination, then their record gets sealed or expunged. Wow. So, that, so they can answer the question honestly, have you ever been convicted of a crime? No. Well, that's tremendous. Yeah. That's tremendous. And it does a great deal of good for the community to help figure out what is it in our community that we're lacking? Is there a resource that we're missing that could have helped this individual? It helps the individual see that there are resources available. Uh, and it helps the victim to see, the, uh, to understand sometimes that they weren't a targeted individual. Um, sometimes... Does that make a big difference to the victim? It makes oftentimes a very big difference. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it just it allows the victim to get their anger out. That's interesting. But they, the board has to be careful of those interactions. And luckily, our victim advocates uh, in my office um, will work with the victim on that. Wow. So, mm. but I do say, as I said, you know, eighty-one percent never come back again to the criminal justice system. And as Judge Cooper Smith used to say, we see eighty percent of the people twenty percent of the time, and twenty percent of the people 
80 percent of the time, <laughs> and it's at, it bears out in the diversion numbers and the restorative justice numbers. But but it's really so. It's I just think it's such a positive thing. I mean, I, and there's nothing perfect. It's always going to be somebody who screws up. But you're really sparing a lot of people a lot of trouble. We're sparing court costs. We're sparing trials and the trauma that victims and even other witnesses law enforcement time to come in mm -hmm. so it really is a, a way to make as i said reparation to the community to the victim so that the offender can understand the impact it's had on what, others what 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 do you find the is there a typical experience with defense counsel faced with these choices Yes, uh, I think it, uh, unless the offender says, I didn't do it, it wasn't me, I want a trial, mm -hmm. the defensive folks, um, defense attorneys are very much willing to have their clients participate. Mm. So they urge it them to they, do that? I think they do. Mm -hmm. They know that it's a positive thing for folks, particularly mm -hmm. if they don't have the criminal conviction at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So. I think everybody in the community of Franklin County is very much in support of it. And we have some great panels um, that work with the offenders, people who volunteer but are trained. Uh, it is a confidential proceeding, mm -hmm. so that's a plus. Oh, that's a, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Yeah. So. Uh, so if they're admitting things, it's in there. It's. It's understood they're going to have to admit that they did this in order to participate in the program. Yes, they have can't, to can't take responsibility. Yeah, okay. And do some of them apologize? Do some they? apologize. Sometimes it's interesting with the juveniles um, who and they get referred to diversion because their parents are there to help them through the process. But you know, many juveniles, kids, teens, mm -hmm. myself included, <laughs> when I was one, we will tell our parents certain things, mm -hmm. but we don't tell them everything. And we've had a couple of situations where the juveniles didn't want their parents to know mm -hmm. everything. Um, and sometimes parents being protective of their, of their juvenile, of their child, um, tend to minimize some of the behaviors. So that can present some difficulties. But once they understand it's confidential, there'll be no record, mm -hmm. even police records will be sealed, mm. we can get a, a, a um, greater co cooperation. So if they finish this and then commit another crime, then this, this, this information is available to yes, the prosecution? Yes, it is. Well, you, I think particularly it, within two years. Yeah, well, I, I just think the, the understanding that this can cause trouble if you commit more offenses is a deterrent which is part of the common law. I mean, I, I think it's, uh, well. So it serves rehabilitation, mm -hmm. deterrent, and it does have some punitive aspect if they're doing commu community service. Community service is always a good thing for the community, mm -hmm. but being given that as a contract requirement, mm -hmm. you know, some, they sometimes consider that a punishment. Well. I want to thank you for what you're doing. I think this is a terrific program. It is, uh, and as I said, the Franklin County program, the one that I'm familiar with, the folks there have just been so wonderful about working with us, trying to develop different types of restorative justice programs. Uh, well, the citizen volunteers have, should be they, yes. they should be praised. They, they're giving over their time. They really help. It's, the, it's wonderful. If we didn't have the citizens, mm -hmm. We're on these panels. Mm -hmm. This would not be possible, and for, you know they are, they do they deserve a great deal of appreciation and thanks from the community for what they're doing mm -hmm. to help the community be a better, safer place. Well, Diane, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for looking in on this. I hope that you will support restorative justice if it ever comes. To, uh, something you can have an influence on. I think public support for something like this is very significant. Thanks. Thank you.